I got from the general of the artillery with a big military ceremony, a, uh, a medal for his heroism. Hierbij overhandig ik u als oudste zoon van Weilen Winnen van Hunnek het aan hem postuum toegekende verzetsherdenkingskruis. I'm Rudy van Hunnick. I was born in the Netherlands in the city of Utrecht in 1930, sort of in the center of the country. I was three years there. Then the family moved to Amersfoort, where my father was in the artillery, uh, the, the cavalry. He taught me ride horse like a devil. When I was 10, I was jumping and everything. That was over when the war started. <laughs> World War II was a terrible experience in my young life. It started in 1940 when I was 10. And my dad had to fight because the Nazi attacked our country. The Nazis bombed the center out of Rotterdam. The Holland and Netherlands landed in World War II by surprise because World War I, they were neutral. Holland expected to be neutral, but the Nazis and Hitler, of course, and they ignored that and they just broke through the borders. And the Nazis, they wanted Holland so badly because the Dutch coast is the closest point of Europe to England. The Nazis occupied Holland they wanted the military after a certain rank working in Germany for them. And, well, my dad was such a fanatic a Dutchman in the military too, Holland, you know. He didn't, went in the resistance. They tried to catch him, he was a leader in the resistance in the underground and they did everything they could to fight their way the Nazi, not with a troop against a troop of soldiers and gun shooting, but other ways. There was a period that the Nazis arrested all the Jews. The Jewish people were at the terrified. They have no first no idea first part that they were loaded in, in trains to concentration camps. They just thought, we, well, we have to be somewhere. They didn't know. And that's where my dad came with his friends and they found all kinds of addresses and places and where they could hide these people and made that they got food and drinks. And that's one thing they did with this group. One time after the war, I came home from school. I was maybe 15, 16. And here was this couple in tears sitting by my mother. Jewish people saved by my dad. And they came thanking. And the other thing that happened more and more, every night from England to the Ruhr Valley in Germany, flew hundreds of American bombers over our house. I still remember the sound from these. The Nazis were shooting like crazy at them and fighting with the Stukas and other. And sometimes they were lucky and shot one down. 
And when they came down, my dad and his friends were right away. Where is it? Whoop! And they raced there because many times, seldom actually that the crew was killed. They jumped. And they landed somewhere and they had all contacts. And they had those little radios. You couldn't use telephone lines or so. And they landed here. And, landed, and they were there before the Nazis came. And they brought them back and they had ways to get them to England. My dad was not living at home because, you know, there was two dangers. They once, in 42, arrested him. He didn't know he was betrayed. One of the guys there was a betrayer. I met the guy. I didn't know he was a, 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 a sneaky. I, yeah, I helped him loading stuff. And one time, I was in 43, I was 12, the Grüne Polizei, called they the Green Police, you say in English, they came with eight men with rifles with bayonets on top. I saw them coming, even. By, they had a sort of a truck, and they were sitting on benches, four on each side, with their guns this way. When the Nazis surrounded the house, and wanted to come in, they ignored the bell and they took the calves from their guns and ran the door in, you know, that just popped out of his lock. Forced himself in. And my dad was visiting, he was home. Really, come help. And we rushed to the attic and I raised up and because that window was high, so I brought up chest and stuff what was there in the attic that he could stand on and I push him and he got in the gutter and out. He again was after a firefight in the place where he was hiding, he was arrested and uh, after they wanted information from him, they transported him to a punishment camp in Germany. They were worse than concentration camps and over the time left from the war, uh, tortured him to death. When my dad was taken away, we were kicked out of the house. My mother with five kids, and that house was given to a German officer and his family. Yeah, <laughs> terrible. And, <laughs> and uh, we were, I was the oldest of the, of the five kids. In 44, in the east of Holland, they offered for children that they could come live by the farmers, that they would survive and not die from hunger. Well, I'll be honest, we were not hungry. Our family, the resistance, took care of us when my dad was arrested. But I liked the farm and the horses and, you know, so I, we had to be 14 maximum. And I said, I want to go. And they took me and, uh, that took a week to uh, go, let's say 100 miles. A farmer from this village came with a horse and a carrot where he took the hay normally on. In the, now he had straw in it and it could have 10 kids sitting on it. And I went to in my knees in the rain with <laughs> Jordan. And then we stayed in the school, so sleeping. And the next day another. And so I came in the village where I finally landed and where the troops liberated us first. And I was the only one speaking English learning. They were used to horses and marching soldiers. And here comes a total mechanized army. And they go, then they come an hour, an hour, a day, no, days and nights. Unbelievable. They set up a camp for 500 soldiers for a certain period with tents and everything. They had their own water even tank. This truck came, another truck opened the side, there was a complete store. And the soldiers could take what they wanted. And they had everything with them. I was in heaven. And listen, I was 14. 
These kids were 17, 18, a lot of them. So let's say that was easy communicating. And I remember the officer in charge, one time, he had a package from home. He was from California. He was reading this letter, the package, and there was an orange in the package. And I went to him, I thought, oh, I'm going to surprise the farmer, you know, Jan, because we hadn't seen oranges in five years. They don't grow there. And I went to him, how many eggs for that orange? I said to him, <laughs> he said, oh, no, no, no. And I said, sir, how many eggs for that orange? He said, you shut up, can't you see? I have a letter from home. I'm two years not heard of seen from home. Now I have a letter and this orange, no, no, no eggs. That goes rotten on the shelf in my tent. I'm not gonna eat it either. And later, I, I said, oh sir, and I took off. And later he came by, he did hand, uh, he said, oh boy, you don't understand what that is. If you're two years from home, between strangers and fighting and doing and hoping you come back alive. And uh, you know, it is, uh, it is hard for us. And uh, yeah, I, I almost cried, you know. <laughs> The fiancé from the farmer, he was 33. Sin, Sin liked me a lot. She liked me, she just, and Sin made clothes for women. And she saw my contact with these troops. And she, as a surprise, came a certain moment with a uniform for me, for the boy from 14 year old. She had imitated a uniform of a soldier. And, uh, <laughs> and she found even a pin with the star because the troops had all on their equipment a five pin star. Oh, and I had a pin with the star and that uniform <laughs> was my greatest love. <laughs> yeah, see, and, 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 uh, and the soldiers, they, uh, they saw, they wanted me put a few stars on it. They laughed at me and they saluted. <laughs> They made a granite block with the story short in a few words. In the sidewalk in front of the house where he lived with the last time in Amersfoort to remember him for always. Willem van Hulk began his military career as a cannoneer at the Corps of Rijn in the Veldartery in September 1917, when he was 18 years old. Hij bleef gedurende 24 jaar in militaire dienst. En hij stond bekend als een groot militair ruiter en paardenkent. Paardendresseur. Zijn kennis van paarden was binnen de artillerie van grote waarde. Willem van Hunnik is opgestaan en heeft als verzetsman zijn taak, zijn werk gedaan, zodat wij hier nu in alle vrijheid met elkaar kunnen staan. En wij zijn er heel erg trots op dat hij in dit huis heeft uh, gewoond en dat deze steen hier komt uh, te liggen. Dank u vriendelijk. Ik voel mij vereerd dat ik namens de, onze familie onze enorme dank kan bedenken, bedanken. Dat ik namens de familie onze enorme dank kan, moment hoor, dat ik kan betuigen voor het initiatief, organisatie en uitvoering. En, en natuurlijk de uitvoering van dit geweldige project. To all the people in the United States of America for liberating the Netherlands and also for the great uh, effort the Dutch people of resistance have done to cooperate with the Americans. Thank you all.
I would say, Dad, you have no clue what respect I had and have for you all my life. Not many kids have for their dad such respect. And I became myself what you call a big shot. But Daddy, you were my man.